Hi everybody, welcome to today's Lessons in Wisdom, coming from Psalm 24. It starts off, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all who are in it. This psalm was sung as the Ark of the Covenant was being transported from the house of Obed-Edom, or Obed-Edom, all the way through to the temple in Jerusalem. And uh, so it's a, it's a song of great proclamation and exaltation, and it begins with, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and the world, and all who are in it. And many have been taught that the devil is the ruler of the earth. Uh, many have been taught to despise the world. People have been told that Satan is the god over this world. But it comes down to what you mean when you say the word world. If by world you mean creation in all its beauty and magnificence and subtlety, then that world is under God's dominion. Yes, it's groaning and it's tired, but it belongs to God. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So it can't be that world. If by world you mean the people Jesus died for, then God claims them for himself, for God so loved the world. And then it says here in the Psalms that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness are of the world and all who are in it. So it can't be that world that is ruled by the enemy. But if by world you mean the systems of the world constructed so as to keep society separated from God, then yes, Satan is the God of that world. But that is the only world that he's got over. Don't believe all the propaganda. The devil has done a great job of promoting himself to make the church believe that he's in control of everything that takes place down here. I've heard people say that when Adam sinned, that he gave the deeds of the planet to the serpent. But this psalm says that the earth is in God's hands. Remember that song, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole wide world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby. You know how it goes. It's all in God's hands. Not even a sparrow falls to the ground without God caring. And Jesus sends us into the world, that's the earth, that's the nations, to set people free from the false constructed systems of the world that are under control, the control of the enemy. Jesus sends us out so that we can set people free from the control of the world that is under the control of the enemy. Yes, so that all things can come under the control of Jesus. Then it says in verses three to six, this is wonderful, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? who may stand in his holy place. Remember, they're climbing up to Jerusalem here. And then it says, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Look at this worshipper. You have clean hands. You don't get involved in what is not your business. You keep your hands clean. You've got a pure heart. There's a certain innocence 
about you, a child-likeness. No shadows are lurking in the hallways of your heart. You do not lift up your soul to an idol. You haven't sold your soul out to the devil. You've separated yourself from the systems of this world. You don't swear by what is false. You're a truth seeker. This is the kind of person that God is looking for. It says, such is the generation that God seeks. Such is the generation. I like to call this the revival generation. A generation of people who are worshipping God. For God seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth. God is looking for a generation of God-seekers, truth-seekers who won't be fooled by the systems of this world. That's the revival generation. This is the generation that the Word of God goes on to say that they, they get blessed. This is the generation that gets blessed. And then it says, Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, ye ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. As soon as you include yourself in the revival generation, things start opening up. Yeah. And here comes Jesus, coming into your life to bless your life. Here comes Jesus, entering into your neighborhood, entering into your home, changing the world around you. Here comes Jesus, because you've determined that you would be part of those people who are going to be worshipping and seeking God. It changes everything. God bless you. And we'll see you again tomorrow for a little more wisdom. Remember now, wisdom is the answer to everything.